Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In the previous session, we have discussed about uh, distribution of subatomic particles in an atom, that is electron, proton, and neutrons. And even I considered the finding the fundamental particles present in an atom by knowing the atomic number as well as mass number. Yes, one can able to find out the total number of fundamental particles as well as total number of protons present, total number of electrons present, and even total number of neutrons present in an atom or else any kind of chemical species. It may be atom, ion or even molecular species or even the ionic species. Well, in this session, I am going to deal with a concept called quantum numbers. Okay. So, we are going to discuss about a concept called quantum numbers. Well, what are these quantum numbers? As the name says, numbers. Okay. In the sense, they are the basically numbers itself. We are going to specify the values. Well, what it indicates? It indicates the some characteristics associated with the electron. Since what we know regarding the distribution of these fundamental particles, protons and neutrons, they were not distributed. But both are concentrated in the center of an atom in the form of nucleus. So what we say? Protons and neutrons are get concentrated at the center of an atom in the form of nucleus. It is the only fundamental particle that is electron. They are get distributed around the nucleus and they are get revolving around the nucleus. Means here electrons are get distributed. The various characteristics of an electron during the distribution will be explained in the form of quantum numbers. Well, we say basically th there are four quantum numbers. They are named as principal quantum number, azimuthal quantum number, magnetic quantum number and a spin quantum number. Each quantum number specifies a particular characteristics of an electron. Okay. So, here these four quantum numbers. So, we say a set of four numbers which describes the which describes the characteristics of an electron is considered as a quantum numbers. So basically we are going to define these quantum number means say these are set of four numbers which describes the characteristics of an electron. Okay, is called quantum numbers. So there are how many quantum numbers? There will be four quantum numbers. Well, we discuss one by one. Well, coming to the first one, the first quantum number is called principal quantum number. So, what is the first quantum number? It is the principal quantum number. Well, what it is? The principal quantum number is given by, is proposed by Neil Bohr. What is the scientist? Neil Bohr proposed the principal quantum number. So, what it is? As electrons are get distributed, distributed means where they get distributed? Yes, they are get distributed around the nucleus. Further, whether they distributed randomly or uniformly means the answer is those electrons are uniformly distributed around the nucleus. Well, uniformly in the sense what? They are distributed in the increasing order of their energies. So, we say electrons are get distributed in the in an atom in the increasing order of their energies. Therefore, we say there will be different energy levels or energy shells present around the nucleus. Those energy shells or energy levels are given by principal quantum number. Okay. So, basically if I consider the first quantum number, it is the principal quantum number. Who proposed this? It is proposed by Neil Bohr. Okay. Well, here this principal quantum number is indicated by a letter small l. So the small l indicates the principal quantum number. And what is regarding values for this? It is a n is going to have any positive integer with values 1, 2, 3, 4, and etc. Means this 1, 2, 3, 4 all indicates the energy levels or energy shells. Well, further, what this principal quantum number actually gives, it determines the size of the orbit or I can say shell 
or principal energy level. So, what is the significance of this principal quantum number means it determines the size of the orbit or I can say energy level or energy shell. Well, size in the sense here we are going to think of radius of a orbit. For nth shell, the radius of nth shell is given by Rn is equal to 0 0.5 529 n square divided by z what is the unit angstrom is the unit okay so remember the formula rn radius of nth shell or nth orbit is equal to 0 0.529 n square divided by z so here n indicates the shell and z indicates the atomic number of that element okay well and what is the unit for this angstrom is the unit okay well then further if i consider one more significance of the principal quantum number it is the it determines the energy of the orbit or what i can say shell or principal energy level okay so two significance of this principal quantum number first one it signifies the size of a orbit or i can say shell Second, it signifies the energy of a orbit or a shell. Okay. Well, then regarding energy, if I consider the energy of nth shell is given by minus 13.6 z square divided by n square electron volt per atom. Okay. So, size, if I consider radius Rn, that formula to be remembered. Further, if I consider energy of nth orbit, is given by a general formula En is equal to minus 13.6 z square by n square electron volt per atom. Okay. Well, then further and again as I said here N indicates the energy level or energy shell. And what is about values here? N may be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and so on. Okay. So, further symbolically numbers 1, 2, 3, as we said, is any positive integer with values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up to n. And if I consider symbolically, yes, these principal quantum numbers are symbolically indicated as k, l, m, n, and so on. The first four shells, first shell indicated with the letter capital K, second is indicated with capital L, third indicated with capital M, and fourth is indicated with the symbol capital N. Okay, and later in an alphabetical order is considered. Say, as we said regarding distribution of electrons, yes, we said electrons were get distributed in the different energy levels or energy shells in the increasing order of their energies. So, generally, how energy increases means energy increases progressively from first shell to second, second to third, third to fourth, fourth to fifth. Okay, energy goes on, increases. Now, if I consider distribution of electrons, yes, electrons are distributed. Electron first are distributed in first shell. After filling first, they go to second. After filling second, they go to third and it continues successively. Okay. Well, now if I consider number of electrons, number of electrons present in any shell. So, the number of electrons present in any shell is given by a formula 2n square. Okay, what is the general formula here? To be remembered, the number of or I can say total number of electrons present in any shell is given by a general formula 2n square. Say if I consider n first shell means n is equal to 1. So, 2 into 1 square. So, 1 square is 1. So, 2 into 1 it is 2 itself. So, what is the answer? In the first shell, a maximum of how many electrons can accommodate? 2 electrons can accommodate. As like if you go for second shell, n is equal to 2, 2 square, 4, 4 into 2, 8. So, in the second shell, how many electrons to be accommodated? 8 electrons can be accommodated. As like, generally what is to be remembered? The number of electrons in an orbit is given by 2n square. Okay, well, well, as I said here, the symbolically the shells can also be represented as k, l, m, n, o, p. Okay, first four shells K, L, M, N. Thereafter, in the alphabetical sequence, you can continue giving continuously. You can give the symbols. 
so n value if i consider k shell means the first shell l second m third n four o means five and p means sixth shell now as for the general formula number of electrons present in any shell is given by 2n square so what we said in first shell so n is equal to 1 so if we place 1 here what we get there will be 2 electrons so we get answer as a 2 it means in the first shell how many electrons one can accommodate a maximum of 2 electrons well coming to the second if n is equal to 2 say in the place of n if you place 2 here okay 2 square it is 4 4 into 2 8 similarly if n is equal to 3 3 3 is a 9 9 2 is a 18 n is equal to 4 4 4 is a 16 16 2 is a 32 so we get the total number of electrons present in any given shell so what is to be remembered here a formula what is the formula here 2n square so this 2n square gives the total number of electrons present in any shell okay well further what i said if the value of n increases that is 1 to 2 2 to 3 3 to 4 what happens to the size size of the orbit increases okay if size of the orbit increases further what about energy energy also goes on increases so so two things if the value of as the value of n increases size of the orbit increases as well as energy of the orbit also increases then regarding angular movement of electron as we said electrons are revolving in a circular path as electrons revolve around the nucleus so they revolve in a circular path therefore the angular momentum of an electron is given by so m v r here m mass of the electron v velocity of the electron r radius of the orbit so the product of mass velocity and radius that is size gives the angular momentum so the angular momentum of that revolving electron will be equal to n h by 2 pi again here n indicates orbit h planck's constant okay well it is regarding principal quantum number okay i hope you got this so principal quantum number gives the energy level or energy shell to which electron belongs and regarding significance of principal quantum number what we say it signifies the size of the orbit or a shell second significance it signifies the energy of the orbit or shell and further what is the one more important thing to be remembered here the total number of electrons present in any shell is given by 2n square and next thing if i consider as the value of n increases what happens to the size size of the orbit increases then what about energy the energy also increases and one more formula last what we said angular momentum of an electron that is mvr is equal to nh by 2 pi so it is about principal quantum number okay well coming to the second one azimuthal quantum number okay it is the second quantum number azimuthal quantum number well here what is azimuthal quantum number so it is also one of the quantum number as like principal quantum number so it is the azimuthal quantum number so all shells that is i'm talking about principal quantum number so all shells are made up of sub shells all shells they made up of sub shells those number of sub shells are given by azimuthal quantum number okay all shells made up of sub shells those sub shells are given by azimuthal quantum number therefore i can say principal quantum number and azimuthal quantum number they are related with one another okay shell now sub shells okay well here if i consider azimuthal quantum number yes this concept was proposed by summer fit okay and earlier as like principal quantum number what is the symbol small n is the symbol as like for azimuthal quantum number also earlier summer field 
he gave a letter capital k but later it is modified to a small yeah so azimuthal quantum number is represented by a letter small l okay well say here l is equal to k minus 1 so k cannot be zero while l can be zero okay further the another names for azimuthal quantum number this azimuthal quantum number is also called orbital angular momentum quantum number or it is also called subsidiary quantum number or it is also called secondary quantum number as i said shells made up of sub shells so the names subsidiary quantum number or i can say secondary quantum numbers well here the value of l the value of l means the value for azimuthal quantum number depends on the value of n means this n value and l value are interrelated they are related with each other well we consider how they are related with one another so l value ranges means azimuthal quantum number for any given shell l value ranges from 0 to n minus 1 the range the l value ranges from 0 to n minus 1 so in the sense for any given n value principal quantum number value what is the l value l value ranges from 0 to n minus 1 say for example if n is equal to 1 n is equal to 1 then what about l value 0 to at the place of n i have to consider 1 now So one minus one zero. So zero to zero means l is equal to zero. So I can say now, if n is equal to one, what is the l value? L is equal to zero. So l is equal to zero in the sense, yes, first shell has one sub shell corresponds to l is equal to zero. Well, say so if n is equal to one, what is the l range? Zero to n minus one means say. So I can say l is equal to zero to 1 minus 1, so l is equal to 0. So we got only one sub shell. Then similarly, if I consider n is equal to 2, if n is equal to 2, again l value 0 to n minus 1, 0 to 2 minus 1 means 2 minus 1 is 1. So l value we are going to get two values here, 0 and 1. It means the second second shell has how many sub shells? two sub shells corresponds to l is equal to 0 and l is equal to 1 similarly if you go for n is equal to 3 then what about l values we get 0 1 2 as l is equal to 4 then l ranges from 0 1 2 and 3 so what that l indicates generally the l value denotes the sub level in main energy level as i said the value of l specifies the sub shells present in each shell so l is equal to 0 means one sub shell l is equal to 0 and 1 means there will be two sub shells l is equal to 0 1 2 3 sub shells l is equal to 0 1 2 3 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 sub shells as like so l values indicates the sub levels or i can say sub shells present in each main energy level or main energy shell well so if values for l we got the possible values 0 1 2 3 4 and so on so based on n value we will get the l values these l values are also symbolically represented so if l is equal to 0 it is called s sub level or s sub shell small s If l is equal to one, it is p sub shell. If l is equal to two, d sub shell. If l is equal to three, f sub shell. If l is equal to four, g. So these are the sub shells. So well, azimuthal quantum number. All shells made up of sub shells. Those sub shells are given by azimuthal quantum number. How it is denoted? It is denoted by a letter small l. So. principal quantum number and azimuthal quantum numbers are related those values are related for any given n value l value ranges from 0 to n minus 1 and further for l we get possible values 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 so on 
and symbolically they are represented as s p d f g h i j and so on okay so s subshell p subshell d subshell f subshell g subshell and so on. well so regarding azimuthal quantum number l values possible l values we got 0 1 2 3 4 and so on and symbolically they are represented as s p d f and so on. the first five symbols s p d f and z these are the spectroscopic terms how these symbols are considered means based on the spectroscopic terms what are those terms say so s refers to sharp that s signifies the sharp p signifies the principal principal peak sharp peak or you can say principal peak then d the symbol d specifies the diffused f specifies the fundamental and g specifies the generalized respectively so here whatever the symbols assigned for azimuthal quantum numbers the first five symbols s p d f and z they are taken from spectroscopic terms sharp principal diffused fundamental and generalized okay well then further regarding say for example if when n is equal to 4 okay if n is equal to 4 what are the possible l values l values are 0 1 2 and 3 what it mean the fourth shell has how many subshells four subshells corresponding values l is equal to 0 l is equal to 1 l is equal to 2 and l is equal to 3 well here as we said l values if l is equal to 0 means s 1 means p 2 means d and 3 means f okay so here if i consider n is equal to 1 l is equal to 0 then what is the subshell 1 s is the subshell okay so first shell has one subshell what is the subshell 1 s similarly if n is equal to 2 l values 0 and 1 0 and 1 means s and p so i can say second subshell okay second shell has two subshells 2s and 2p similarly if you go for n is equal to 4 okay l value 0 1 2 3 so corresponding symbols 4s 4p 4d and 4f so i can say here these are the four subshells fourth shell has four subshells what are those 4s 4p 4d and 4f if i n is equal to 3 3 subshells 3s 3p 3d so as a like based on the l value we can specify l values generally 0 to n minus 1 okay well the number of l values is equal to magnitude of n value if i consider total number so what we analyze there say so first shell one subshell that is one s second shell two subshells 2s 2p third shell three subshells 3s 3p 3d okay fourth shell four subshells 4s 4p 4d and 4f so there is a correlation between total number of subshells and shell what is that the number of l value is equal to magnitude of n value that n indicates the total number of subshells also okay so first shell has one subshell second has two subshell third has three subshell fourth has four subshell and so on okay well then further the energy of various sub levels or you can say subshells so among these for any in a given shell if there are more than one subshells are present or you can say two or more subshells present then it is necessary to again consider the energy of those sub levels or subshells so in general in any given shell the energy of these sub levels or subshells is in the order of s is less than p p is less than d d is less than f f is less than g means energy increases from s to p p to d d to f f to g g to h and so on okay well so what is the significance of this azimuthal quantum number means it signifies the shape of the orbitals 
okay it signifies the shape of a orbitals or simply i can say it gives the it signifies the orbitals well say s orbital if i consider s orbital which is spherically symmetric or i can say it is non directional in nature whatever the s sub shell we get here s sub shell has one orbital so it is called s orbital s orbital is spherically symmetric in nature or i can say it is non directional in nature then coming to the p sub shell p sub shell has p orbitals if i consider shape of the p orbitals these p orbitals they have dumbbell shape okay then regarding d sub shell d sub shell is made up of d orbitals these d orbitals they have double dumbbell shape and regarding f sub shell f sub shell is made up of f orbitals f orbitals are going to have a complex shape or even it is also called quadra dumbbell shape or i can say four fold dumbbell okay it means if i consider significance of azimuthal quantum number yes it signifies the shape of the orbitals present in a subshells well i hope it is clear for you again in the next session i am going to continue the quantum number concept okay thank you